Twisting. I just don't want to, your your tea to get in the the lurch of the uh, twisting wires here. Yeah. Okay. Would you talk, please? I I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking. Are you turning up those uh, volumes? Yeah. And and is it okay now? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Looks good. It looks great. Oh, I have really bad cramps. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I can't help that, but I can distract you. Okay. I do that. Okay, so what do you think when you buy a sandwich? Like you pay good money to buy a sandwich and some I... and wait, wait, I'm not done. Oh, sorry. Not just a sandwich, not just okay. any sandwich. It's right. so you buy a professionally put together sandwich and it comes on dry bread. Um, first of all, I don't buy sandwiches that come on bread. Because if I wanted a sandwich made out of bread, I would just make it at home. What? Really? Yeah. I buy sandwiches that have like those big, cushy, like homemade sub buns that I don't have at home. Yeah. My policy about food out in public is I don't buy anything that I can't make pretty darn easily at home. But I'm lazy, so. Uh, but don't you expect. I do like sandwiches out very much. Yeah, don't you expect a professionally made sandwich just to have like Maybe all it the... it wasn't dry, Christina. Maybe it was toasted. No. Nope. And you're just... No, it didn't have mayonnaise not or mustard or anything. enough to know the difference between toasted and dry. God, you're no help. I thought you would just... I thought you would come <laughs> yeah, to the I'm rescue. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to just play the devil's advocate. I, I, don't, I don't approve of dry bread. Is that what you need me to say? Yeah. Okay. That's... I don't know. Now you dropped your nose. I mean, I think you could, you could <laughs> say, like, do you want it dry? And I could say no. Nobody's going to ask if you want it dry. Nobody wants it dry. Are you, you going to say like, uh, yeah, because I'm going to make croutons right here at my restaurant table. I think it's because it was a health food sandwich. And sometimes they assume that the people oh. who like health food just don't need things like mayonnaise. And it's not true. It's a falsity. Yeah, it is. It's very unfair and if very If you don't have mayonnaise, how is, your, how is your sandwich even holding together? That's a, it didn't hold together, believe me, because I was trying to eat it in the car. That it's, was a, it's a fine line, was, though, Christina. I was trying to Too out. much mayonnaise and all the innards squirt out the back of the sandwich when you clamp onto it with your little mitts. Yeah, but I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather have to deal with that. I have a strategy. That's, that's, I just turn it a, for every other bite. So it squishes one way, and then it squishes back the other way. So you get a sort of seesaw effect as you eat. Yeah. And I think that's the only way to eat a very slippery sandwich. Hey, do you remember that Lily Tomlin sketch, sketch, skit, whatever, where yeah. she's like, I don't know if it was, if it started on Saturday Night Live, <clears throat> excuse me, or if it started on Sesame Street, where she just sits in a giant chair and lists over and over again, like, all the different things she wants on her sandwich. Do you know what I'm talking about? I missed that, I think. Okay, well, it's classic, like, 70s or 80s skit, 
and I, she's pretending to be a little girl, and she has her hair in pigtails, and she sits in a giant oversized chair, and she just starts listing sandwich ingredients, but they get more and more bizarre as she goes on. <laughs> you know, she wants, like, sardines and mustard and cheese and pickle. Like, it just, she just lists everything. And I it's see. funny, and I, I thought it was a dream that I had when I was a kid, and then one day I just Googled lady sitting in giant chair talking about sandwich and up it popped and I, I was like oh my god this was a real thing I remembered a real thing that I saw when I was a kid never Jeez, mind I don't so, know where I was going with that but it's yeah. good if you have well, a chance to watch go on YouTube Lily Tomlin wish I could have some flashbacks like that you have flashbacks all the time what are you talking about well I just like some mysterious flashbacks that would inform me about myself and tell me secrets about myself that I didn't know before. Does like, it smell like, like sewer that. in here today? Do you get that smell a little bit? Just no. a sour? Oh no, it's dead mouse. You smell dead mouse a little? No. My microphone smells like dead mouse. No, Should I take off the no. cover and look under it? Uh, I know I've been, making, it I've been making noises with mine because I just, I feel like this, this microphone it's isn't quite, faint. isn't quite stretching far enough to, to, to meet me. It's usually comfortably so that I can look at you without like twisting. But today I, I feel like I have to look this way and I can't look at you. I think you have, I think you have to bend that elbow up a little more and then turn it. No, oh, like this the, is, this is better. Wait a minute. It's is sorry for all this does? noise, people. It's it's not it doesn't look the way it usually looks either. I don't know, somebody played with it last night. Now you're like craning your <laughs> neck rammed in between the back of your chair and No, that. this is good. This is okay. This is all right. Okay. How do I look? Do I look natural? So natural. Okay. <laughs> good. I forgot to introduce the show. Go ahead. <laughs> I totally forgot also to post this morning until I was like running out the I door. Know. And then I was like, uh, 11th hour radio. I told Court. Bye. I said, <laughs> I said, I hope Emily's coming because she didn't post I was, the show I was. Facebook. It's just my computer had run out of battery and I was too lazy to go get the cord someplace else in the house and then like jump over a giant pile of laundry to the one outlet in our in our 1700s house that like you can actually plug anything into. You know what's crappy about an old house that someone redid in the 1940s? The plugs in the house, there's only like one in every room because in the 1940s they figured, why the heck would anybody need more than one electrical mm -hmm. outlet in a room? Well, well, that's just crazy talk there. So there's only one outlet in every single room of our house and the outlets only have two holes in them. So Instead of three? Yeah. Everything that you could plug in now has you can't. two prongs and you that to, little grounder. You have to have an adapter. So we have handfuls of these adapters, but you can never <laughs> find one when you want one. You root through the junk drawer where, where you know yesterday there was like 17 of them and then suddenly mm -hmm. there's not any. And mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so then you have to go and take the adapter off some other appliance, shutting it off. And then wow. somebody's like, why is that toaster not have an adapter? And and just saying, here's things that I deal with that people don't know about. Okay, you guys are listening to 11th Hour Radio. <laughs> Which is coming to you live from Royalton Community Radio, WFVRLP 96.5, with your hosts, co-hosts, Christina Stikos and Emily Howe. We come to you every Friday at 11 a.m., and they rebroadcast us sometime in the middle of the night when no one's listening, I'm pretty sure. That's good. Yeah. But, but we fooled them because we have podcasts everywhere at, like... Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> You can find them all somehow on our uh, website at 11thHourRadio.com. Christina also sticks them out there on um, YouTube, so you can subscribe there, or Apple Podcasts, which is the same thing as iTunes, and some other place. Wow. Or something. Thank you, sponsors and underwriters, which are, I'm going to even, look, I'm doing such a good job. I'm going to say going. them Just and everything. Going. It's Go the Mountain Folk Concert Series, Tunbridge Grease Collective, Rivendell Restoration. Is that right? I always get it wrong. No. In Howville Farms. You always get it right and you say it's wrong. So I think it's right. It so just then. sounds so fancy, and I'm pretty sure. Rivendell Restoration. Doesn't that sound fancy? Rivendell Restoration. Well, restoration is kind of fancy. If you're going to restore something, means you have some extra money around to restore it. Right. Rivendell also sounds pretty fancy. It's not like fixing fancy. something. Restoring something is uh, upper class. Kind of fix it. Yeah. Sorry, Todd. We didn't mean to pick <laughs> apart your your uh, naming. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, We're not responsible well, for what we say on air. 
let's face it, we, you know, a lot of our employment comes from people with disposable income. That's just a fact of I'm life around sure here. I'm pretty sure he's not one of those people, though, but I just... No, I mean, he's... Oh, his some of his clients probably have enough money to restore their houses. That's all. Since all right. some of us don't have enough money to restore our houses, so we work for people. Yours who doesn't have need to be restored income. yet. It's like still oh my gosh. okay. No, that's not so true. It's, well, it needs to be like that propped up again. But another, I feel like restoration refers to a <laughs> word that goes with like an old. What did you house. just say? It needs to be propped up now and that, then. That, yeah, <laughs> that indicates. Oh, speaking of which. Well, I didn't have to water my plants this morning. Guess why? You shouldn't have to water your plants anymore. No, guess, ever, cause, guess why? Because your roof leaked on them. Yep. <laughs> right in my living room. Guess why I would know that? Because mine does it too. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, and I don't have any disposable uh, income to life. fix that, but, you know, know, at least it's like sometimes it works out in your favor. Sometimes you I was like super grouchy this week because somebody, somebody, I think I probably already told you this. Maybe I didn't. I was complaining about it to somebody, but it was, yeah. Was it you? No, it was grouchy week, though. Oh, oh. I got, no, I got with grouchy. John too. running for state rep, I, it's so funny the comments and stuff that people sort of, anonymously put online Don't under things and I'm like it. wow you have no idea what you're talking about right now like some all these all these different um places like kind of lobbyists um go after you when you're running even for a teeny little thing like this and so John has gobs and gobs of emails from all these different organizations and they're like fill out this survey fill out that survey and at first he filled a few of them out and sent them in and so like the Vermont conservation voters were like oh cool we liked your answers and we'll, we support you or whatever. So he's like, okay, good, great. But what they meant by that was they actually created a commercial for him that has been playing nonstop online, which is fine. Like it's all good things that they're saying, but they're not using his words. They're using their own words. They went and chose their own picture, which was a horrible picture of him. Whatever. I don't care. He's not vain. I'm more vain about him than he is, but whatever. Horrible picture. And then they put a bunch of words into his mouth, which... Are maybe things he feels, but they are really, I, I don't know, whatever. They were talking points for the organization. They were talking points for the organization. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you get lots of comments, good and bad, on these commercials um, that come up, which, I, which we technically have nothing to do with at all. And some people are like, don't vote for John O'Brien. He doesn't care if he raises our taxes. He has lots of money. And I'm like, what? Like, what? On what Well, level? Like... There's that's a whole political party unto itself. The people who just all they do is go around and say that person's going to raise your taxes. That person's going to raise your taxes. Like, it's just um, like it doesn't it doesn't relate to reality. Yeah, I, it's no? just it's maddening it's, because no. I I want to be like, would you like to see our finances? Because bet yeah, you you can't even go there. You just I know can't go I know I can't all. go there. I have and see this is why John will be a good politician and I won't. <laughs> And I never want to be because he has a thick skin and this doesn't bother him. It doesn't bother him that, you know, we actually live on the poverty line and people are going around complaining that he has so much money when every person complaining about this has far more money than he does. And it's very, very silly. Um, yeah, it's just an opportunity don't, for it's people. It's very odd. It's very odd. But whatever, whatever. This doesn't actually upset him. But it makes me, I always want to like, I always want to like argue this yeah and it yeah. isn't gonna matter but. no no people just have their issues that they kind of project onto everything i know so but and anyway. it just happened like you know they're projecting those issues to a lot of different people and it just happened you were in the line of fire this week you know so you got it too i guess you were a good a good target but if you're gonna you know if you're gonna be public at all you're gonna be a target the two go together i know so. i know yeah i have to get i know better at it yeah, I you will. This is good. It's a good training ground for you, Ugh. I think. But I my legs, like, <laughs> my knees are weak. My knees yeah. are weak the way they get when I'm nervous or scared about something. And I know they're going to be this way until, until November 6th. Until November 6th. <laughs> I was trying to think when it's that. It's Tuesday, of it's course. It's Tuesday. Yeah, so I just want it to be over I, with. Yeah, I voted already. I did my you did job. My, I just like to do it ahead of time. That's I just smart. find it to be easier because I had to go pay my property taxes. So I went up and I said, Owen, oh, can I have a ballot? I don't even so know what to do on it. election day. We usually were like helping out or something or John always has to be there counting votes and stuff. Uh, but he isn't allowed to be anywhere near it, <clears throat> obviously. 
this time. So I'm like, wow, we're going to like sit home and twiddle our thumbs. It just <laughs> makes me feel really nervous. So I was like, I know. can't we fold chairs or something? Uh, I know. It's easier, <laughs> to be, it's easier to do things, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh well. Well, I wanted to tell you about this big GPS fail that I had yesterday. You I have mean, GPS? I use it on my phone. Oh, on your I phone. I use okay. sometimes if I'm trying to go somewhere, I'll dial it up, dial up an address on my phone, and then yeah. the phone will supposedly take me there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it sort of got personal yesterday. Um, the GPS unit, which I consider, you know, artificial intelligence, basically. It's it's tracking me, you know. So I was driving up to Bolton Valley for a for a meeting, and um, it's uh, so I, so I, so it took me up to Bolton Valley, and it started to take me up the mountain road there, up towards the ski area, and then suddenly it said something like, "Your destination is on the right. You'll have to walk the rest of the way." What? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. My GPS told me I was going to have to walk the rest of the way. Sassy pants. It was sassy pants. God. And I knew it was wrong. Yeah. Because the only thing that was there was this little dirt driveway with the, you know, that went into the wilderness. And I said, I don't think this is it. (laughs) So I just, I defied my GPS, which, you know, you feel. They get like increasingly anxious if, if you defy them. They do. They're kind of like, they turn say, around, they turn say, around. No, they say something like, return to the root, return to the root. Right. And I was like, <laughs> no. And, you know, you don't, you can't always pull a, pull off and shut them up. So they're, they I continue know. to talk I, to you. I feel almost sometimes bad, like I'm offending them by not listening to their advice sometimes. But yeah, when it's well, bad, you just don't follow bad advice. Yeah. Well, I found it myself. I should have just used the map. Yep. Because I could have. Yeah. But I used my instinct. My instinct kicked in. Good job, Christina. Yeah, I got there. Yeah. And so, so I was visiting Tiffany, my friend Tiffany. Now, when you hear the name Tiffany. I was just going to say. Yeah, what do you think? That what woman you did not of, name herself. Well, what do you think <laughs> of when you, you know, what, what does do that name of? conjure uh, up for you? Pastel colors and sparkly things and... um chiffon prom dresses okay i i think or chandeliers right isn't there big a tif- hair tiffany's a brand name of some well it's weird when i think of like tiffany glass like the beautiful stained glass yeah it's very different than what i think of when i think of the person's name tiffany the person's name tiffany seems super 80s super like frou-fou'd up and um, and no offense, hair. no offense to Tiffany, of no, course. of course not. No. She didn't name herself. Of course. Well, this is the reason I brought up Tiffany, I brought up her name, is that so it turns out that Tiffany has this tractor trailer sized storage unit, which is filled with like speaker wedges and consoles and racks of amplifiers and cables and, and stuff like that. That's what, that's what Tiffany has. Do you ever feel your pulse beating in other places in your body that you feel like maybe you shouldn't be feeling it? <laughs> yeah. Where are you feeling it? Like in one of my butt cheeks and it's really weird. <laughs> maybe it's the way I'm sitting. Like I'm applying wanna, too much pressure to my shift? butt. Do you want to shift? No, I'm just concentrating on the fact that I can literally feel my heart beating really hard in my butt. Okay. I'm sorry. No, Continue. it's okay. I think everybody in the whole area here <laughs> needed to know that I just that was curious. going on for you. I can never feel my pulse when I try to put my hand on my heart like we were doing last week and I can't really feel it that well when I press my hand into my wrist. So, But right now, it's it's maybe it's just a twitch. Like a really rhythmic one. Okay. All right, sorry. I didn't mean to. I was just concerned that maybe I was having like a stroke or something. So well, I, I think since I would... you were you were very so focused on your health there, you probably missed the fact that, that Tiffany has like no, a tractor trailer No, I heard all about her tractor sized... trailer of... of um, consoles and amps and Speak- some sort of wedges that you said speaker too. wedges i don't know what that means Well, like if you go to a festival and you look at the stage and there are these huge towers with speakers oh, and subwoofers no the actual speakers you know they go up like 15 feet in the air these speakers what does that have to do with a wedge tiffany though? has speaker wedges <laughs> okay good Just want to tell you all right. Because she's okay. not your typical Tiffany, and this is the whole point of this conversation. She's definitely is that not. don't judge a book by its cover, Emily. 
What do you think an Emily is? I know. It's the most overused name. Well, you say that, but go go a little deeper. Like, what is an Emily? It's a prissy, prissy, goody, goody two shoes. Is that why you're wearing pink today? No, it was just the only thing I could find clean. Look, as if I you want to counteract some of that, you got to dress right. I wore all black through all four years of high school. That didn't help, did it? No, you I had back, safety pins in my ears, pink. for God's sake. Came home and to And a pink. nose ring. What, you had a nose ring? I had a nipple ring, too. No, you did yeah. not. The nipple Don't ring, tell me that. The nipple ring Don't tell only me that lasted on the radio. about three weeks because it would like flip up and down Ugh. like your shirt would or your bra would make it Whoa. move and it would send a twinge of the weirdest not nice feeling through your body it's because it's like acupuncture and then there was so a, it was kind it was of like this a, weird twitch was that's happening in. in my butt right now but it was next worse. time if you're gonna do that you should probably go to an acupuncturist to get that put in the right place anyway it didn't last very long and i remember as soon as i took it out here comes the train fast oh, and hard today Later, many years later, when I was talking to my, um, I'll yeah. just shut up while this no, train can, is going by. You can talk if you want. We'll no, well, no, let's listen to the train. Okay. And then I'll finish. All right, here we go. Those little kids downstairs are loving it today. They're all screaming and laughing. That was, that was like somebody had professionally mixed in the sound of a child screaming I know. on top pretty, of a, w- a train whistle. It didn't that was sound a, real. That was what you call a montage. It was a montage. A sound was montage. Beautiful. Anyway, I asked, very, very embarrassed, because suddenly I was like this pregnant mom talking to my super sweet hippie midwife, and I had to ask her, like, if the fact that I had pierced my nipple in high school was going to affect like breastfeeding and was like milk going to spray out in all the wrong directions. Wow. And that was an awkward conversation to start. She was, of course, perfectly fine with it because of, they hear everything there. It's kind of an awkward thing to kind talk of like about. like you poor folks on the radio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one thing to talk to your midwife about it in the privacy of your home. Yeah. 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 See, I don't really have those filters as you may may not well, it's okay this. do you want me to segue into something else or did you sure. want to continue so, no telling the point me more is about the point is i'm also not care. a typical emily no. that was the point yeah you're totally not tiffany <laughs> i'm all, i'm all i'm with you okay so we don't have a tip we have an atypical tiffany and we have an atypical emily there and is so, no so there is no typical not only tiffany, does i i don't know why we think that there is that's us being crappy well we're all. just admit, we're shedding our stereotypical points of view yeah. If by saying them in public we can shed them all right okay so here's the thing is that tiffany you know if you're gonna have a festival call tiffany because she has a sound reinforcement company and I she'll think we're alone now na, 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 na. that's the other tiffany by the way who also would be pretty awesome at a sound festival <laughs> sorry 80s well, music in which you had tuned out at that point. Yeah. Thank goodness. I know. That was a good decade to pick to not listen to Dude, music. that is a good song. Tiffany. Tiffany, no last name. What was Tiffany's last name? Not she, your Tiffany. She didn't need Tiffany. one. She was like I'm Cher. I'm not talking about your Tiffany. She was Tiffany. like Cher. I'm talking about Tiffany she from the 80s. She just had a name, Tiffany. a one name. When I first performed, I just had my first name. Oh, like <laughs> that's like Christine Holoquist, but you just had an A. I was just talking about this with somebody the other night. I actually wish that she, instead of writing Christine on all of her um, campaign signs, Mm -hmm. it should say Holoquist. Because I feel like, so nobody else uses their first name. And I feel like... You think she's playing the gender card. I I feel like that's playing the gender card. And I feel like that's exactly what is not important about her. Wait, 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 wait. What? Bernie. Mm, you're right. Right. People make that choice. I guess you're right. I never even thought about that. So that's my bad. I and just it, I just felt like to be super taken seriously and just be like, look, my gender is not the issue here. Because that's kind of important to make yeah. it known that the gender is not the issue you have here. To, that I wouldn't have used the first but name. But you have to admit she looks better as a woman. I I never saw her yeah. as a man. I She's can't. cute. Not that it matters. I wouldn't vote okay. for her for that reason. I'm just saying, because guys say that about girls all the time. Like, yeah, she's cute. And like, she's smart. I got I actually wrote a 
I, I like I go straight for a lot of weirdo blogs and stuff, but I actually wrote a post this morning that I did not post, but I should because I was just I ran into several different incidences this week where I just got really irritated at <clears throat> the the female's constant pressure to look a certain way and I got really irritated because I'm like we spend so much time morphing ourselves and twisting ourselves and wasting our life just to look a certain way. And and like, it doesn't matter. Even the most perfect looking of us doesn't even matter. Like, Well, I think Nancy, if, Nancy Reagan had it right. You know, she, she put, uh, what did she say? Just say no. That was to drugs, Christina. Yes, but that phrase is useful. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Just say no to morphing yourself Just, into Can you imagine how much thing. of our what? Like, we have so much to... We have a very short life here. And, like, we have a bazillion things that we could be doing that are awesome. And instead, we spend all this time, like, wishing we looked like something else or or that, like, what? Uh, okay, there's a couple things going on. I know. We have I'm to having, play some music. I'm having to multitask. Uh, oh, and it's no. stressing me out. Okay. Because I one thing I have to say, we have a lot of listeners who are not in Vermont and who don't know that Christine Halquist, to which we have been referring, is transgender. Right. Unless you Sorry. unless you watch, she's been on the national news. Right. You're and that's, right. That's probably why she got the Democratic nomination in this state is we because they knew she was going to be promoted sign. nationally. We need to have a sign in this studio specifically for me. To remind me that we're on that radio, like that people are listening to us. Like I honestly you forget. I am so used now to wearing yeah. these little earphones and talking to a microphone to you that yeah. I literally have always forgotten. Yeah. Ever since like probably the first year that we did this, it's been five years now. I actually am forgetting that people hear us. I think it's kind of cool, actually. I but I don't know like <laughs> if the radio station thinks it's cool, but we'll find out. They haven't thrown we'll us find, out they yet. They haven't Why stopped haven't they? us. Well, I we mean, do. We promote the station, no, WFVR really Community Radio, weird Royalton way. Community Radio. It's fantastic, fantastic community. We're full of backhanded resource. compliments. Is that the right? Well, we do love the station. Question. We do we love, love the it station. so much. That's we come true. here every Friday. We love it. Like I don't to, know if the station loves us, but uh, well, on that happy note. Let's play another song because okay. it is. It's late now. That was the other thing that was stressing me I know. out. It's like I, well, if we don't, we don't want to play. The train came early, Christina. Okay, you think that threw us off a little I bit? I do think it threw us off, but go ahead and play this song so we can just All get right. back on track. What do I here. have? I have The Dark Door of Loneliness. Ooh. This is by uh, Nick Col- Cowles. Coles. Cow- I don't know how to say his name. He runs an orchard over in Shelburne. Oh, yeah. I know Nick. who you're talking about. Nick. He's an orchardist, but he's also kind of a cool, quirky musician. Nice. Let's hear it. There's a well in the back of the garden. Water is deep and clear When the moon's just right Shining down its light You can see my reflection down there Sometimes it's not so clear to me What kind of love I've found If I'm in the well looking up at the moon If I'm on the moon looking down to see you dancing in the sun with a smile for everyone While I'm standing in this dark door of Falling through When the moon's just right Shining down its light See myself lying next to you Sometimes it's not so clear to me What kind of love I've found If I'm in the well looking up at the moon If I'm on that moon looking down, down To see you dancing in the sun for everyone while I'm standing in the dark door of loneliness. Ooh, baby, what am I supposed to do when the moon's just right shining? 
sliding down this light I can see myself lying next to you All right, thank you, Nick. Thanks, Apple Man. I love that we what have was that. That was just me making noise because okay. I'm kind of clumsy, so I just I hit the, the kids down. This is oh big, god, it sounds like it's a big wooden desk that we have. We don't have a fancy console. It sounded here. like we rocks have, were hitting our radio station or something. Yeah, we have an old-fashioned wooden desk upon which there is a console, but it's it's pretty old school, I'd say. I have an old dining room so table over I, here. I just wanted to con- I just wanted to finish off with t- what I was telling you about Tiffany. Okay, okay because yes, Tiffany, please. so Tiffany, it's unusual enough I think for somebody to uh for for a Tiffany to run a sound reinforcement company and have a tractor trailer sized uh, storage shed full of this gear, but she also if you go to her website and you look at her company which is called Sound Gravi- Gravitas uh Productions. You you know, she does the typical things, like she'll come and, you know, set up for festival events and things like that. But if you scroll down far enough, you get to one of her services is called Shamanic Stage and Space Clearing. Oh, no. Yeah. So here's what it says. It says, quote, the space chosen for your event can be just as important as the event itself in preparation for setting the stage. Space and stage clearings offer an energetic decluttering to your chosen location. Emily, this is the future. This is the future. Um, I'm, I'm all, I'm, I can't wait to work with <laughs> Tiffany. I'm going to work with Tiffany. She sounds nice. I liked her. She's, like her. she's Just, smart. She's intuitive. I know. She's like it's so hip. Okay. She's changing the world. <laughs> One Tiffany at a time. <laughs> So, okay. That's all I'll say about Tiffany. Okay. I hope, you know, she sometimes listens to the show, so she probably... Is she hate, the one who tells us to hate, shut up? hate me after the... No, it's not the shut up. Mm-hmm. I did see her at the market after I after the show last time. She was fine. <laughs> <laughs> she was better than fine. She was great. Aww. So, okay. I, was, I get a little fed up with advertising sometimes. Here's the latest. Have you ever heard of Stay Up Technology? Yes. Yeah. What is it? Why why can't we just go to sleep? Oh, no, that's actually not what it was, but that's a good guess. Stay up mean? technology. This was in an advertisement for a certain uh, Doesn't product. it mean like something that's like 24 hours so that you can re- get it every time you possibly No, it was What does a- it mean? I'm sorry. It was an ad for socks. Oh. Get it? Well, if you were a dancer, which you sort of are, but like for real you would see on all these dancer catalogs that there is sock glue to keep your socks up. Because, for instance, you know how Irish dancers always wear those cute little knee socks? Yeah. They also have fake curly hair pieces stuck in their hair. Wow. It's not real, by the way. You think all those Irish dancers really have beautiful this, curly hair? You know what? This is Jupiter and Scorpio. Just telling you. They have sock secrets. glue. Exposing secrets. Yeah, there's a whole page of sock glue usually in and dancers catalogs. Tiffany Clogs. Yes. She's from North Carolina. She's oh, a clogger. Yeah. Well, okay, lots so of I cloggers come from North Carolina. You. I told her about you. Awesome. So, and of course she's heard the show. So anyway, you just, <laughs> I just, uh, there's more to people than you ever could ever of know. There is Christina. Unless you open your heart and you let them in. Speak, yeah. Speaking of <laughs> relationships. Uh, did you want to talk about relationships a little bit? Oh, let's see. Let me get my no. I'll tell you what. Phone and <gasps> I'll just cheats. Oh, sorry. Bar. No, just, it's fine. I didn't realize how short she dropped, that cord she was. She dropped her phone. I'll just move over here now. Uh, just Don't an update. Me. Just an update on the leaf blowers and the leaf suckers that I mentioned last week. Oh yes. Yeah, so there's an update to it. So I get to my gardening my job. Chair. You, you're not going to believe this. <clears throat> you're absolutely just. It was me. like your dream come true. It was my dream. There was come a true. leaf I sucker. <laughs> There was a leaf, there was a leaf blower, blower going into going a, leaf, to a sucker? leaf sucker. It oh. actually happened. MG. I thought it was just like a metaphor that I was creating for, you know, my idea of purgatory, but actually, no. Oh, look, here's the ad. Here's the ad with his smirky picture. Oh, oh yeah. Let's oh, see. whoops. Smirky. It's going again. Hold on. Yeah, this, you I don't know, know how what this, to make it you back. You know what the smirky is? 
And what? this is a picture of a campaign picture for John O'Brien that's not the most flattering. That smirk. Uh, see? Yes, but you know what that smirk is? Just shows me that he's uncomfortable having his picture taken. That's what that smirk well, says. I don't know to where me. they got that picture in the first place. Somewhere offline, I guess. It's, it was at one of our kids' birthday parties, well, though. So how did they is, get that? His wife is a photographer. You put everything I didn't, online. Yeah, but I didn't take everything that picture because, see, that right there, that shoulder is me cropped out of this picture. <laughs> So I did not take it. I I remember where that was taken. That's pretty slick. It's weird. Oh, you know what's weird? More weird than like strange companies getting random pictures of us from nowhere. The other thing that's really weird is last night I was texting my sister Jen at the same time as I was helping my son Eli with some homework on the computer. So he had the computer and he was typing and I had my cell phone and I was texting my sister Jen. And I very rarely text people i'm not very good at it but anyway i'm texting away and i'm getting eli to finish up because we had promised the kids that if they got their homework done by a certain time we could watch a family movie so i'm texting and i say to him um it's if you don't get this done in the next couple minutes we're going to run out of time to watch a movie or whatever Mm -hmm. because he was kind of procrastinating he kept like switching over and looking up skateboards and stupid stuff and i was like stop it anyway all of a sudden my phone without me doing it recorded everything I was saying and sent it to my sister. <gasps> and all of a sudden Jen was like, I just got a voice I just got a voice message from you and it said it told Eli to finish up his homework so that he was wow. gonna he could watch a movie. Wow. And I was like, what? I I hadn't touched a thing. Nothing. You must have accidentally hit the th- I thing didn't because it was like I had set it down and I was looking over at Eli really? and uh. and Jen was like texting to me. She's like, you've been hacked. You've been hacked. Blah. Oh, we've we've all been hacked. I don't I, I just how did that happen? Does anyone know? Is there a way with phones like that like that <laughs> Alexa stuff? Like if you say a certain thing, will it turn on? Because I know that's a thing. Voice activation. Right. Like if there you say a certain a, word, will yeah. it turn itself on? Oh, well, probably depends on the phone. Because like I, I, there probably other is. people's it's like if you say hey mm. Alexa or whatever, or hey something that sounds like that. It's, but it yeah. might turn on. So I, I'm never, I'm never gonna have an Alexa. No, me neither. But this was bad enough. Yeah, that was pretty I think weird. We, have, we have to really control the screens in our life. I know. I have to take charge of the screens <laughs> instead of vice versa. <sighs> um, okay, were you done with that? What you wanted to say? Because I want to tell I you, I can't remember what I was saying. So it right. doesn't matter. It's just kind of important that I, uh, I just want to tell you about this disconcerting experience that I had at the um, at the car dealership. You went to a car dealership, like yeah. for real? You'll understand why. Because okay. of course, I my mechanic sent me to the car dealership mm-hmm. to to for a certain reason. So I walk in, and there's two guys at the service desk, and one is leaning on the end of the counter, sort of faux casual. Mm-hmm. You know how they, yeah, they look? I do. Like, oh, I'm just hanging around here. Right. But uh, he makes this, he, you know, it makes this oversized introduction to himself, calling himself by his first name. Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm the manager here. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, mm-hmm. all I did was walk in the door. I didn't mean to run into the manager, but he just happened right. to be standing there right. so so ever so casually. So uh, he's, you know, he's he's trying to make me feel special. Yep. That's his job. Yep. Paul is there to make me feel special. And um you know, that's his that's his job. He's the he's the do nothing manager. You can just tell he's the do nothing <laughs> manager. I'm not even going to say what dealership it is cuz it doesn't really matter, but you know, he's trying to please me. He's trying to fulfill my every desire and I just walked in the door, you know, looking for a gas cap. You know, so I knew that was going to disappoint him. I knew that I could not live up to his expectations and I could just feel this disaster. I could feel a train wreck coming Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know there's just no way around it so i i just had to i just got right to the point i said paul i need a gas cap (laughs) you're wasting your efforts here buddy yeah and that was it but without missing a beat he just walked over to the uh parts counter and then he like makes this big deal out of getting the parts guy like acting like the parts guy wasn't wasn't alert enough to be there Mm -hmm. when i looked when i needed my gas cap so he gets the guy to come over, and then, you know, that was kind of the end of that transaction. I think he – I felt like I was on Broadway or something. It was just a show. <laughs> it was just this whole show. Car salesmen are a special breed. They should be they on are. Broadway. You know what they should do when Broadway musicals 
are recruiting their actors, they should go around to used sale like car sales places <laughs> and just take all those guys because they're so they're very good. over the top. They are like exaggeration. That's yeah. what you want on stage. But you kind the funny thing is you kind of enjoy it. You kind of like being well, the it's center. Super cliche. Of you their, know what to expect you know immediately. You know it's fake. You know it's just because they want you to buy something. But right. for, you know, it's you just kind of bask in that being the center of their universe just yeah. for that short period of time. Right. So it. anyway, that's all I had to say. But it's actually time for another song because Whoa. we kind of screwed up the last uh, okay. our timing. So let's go to the next one. It's called Snaps for Screwing Up. What, what? is this next one? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hey, interesting. This one's called The Wind is Lonesome. You remember what the you last song was called? I do. I could pressing No, I'm shedding. Today. I'm shedding loneliness. I'm oh. shedding it. That's oh. why this is an outward expression uh, and declaration of shedding loneliness. So I'm playing all these lonely songs because we okay. all feel lonely. Anyway, this yeah, is it's uh, November. Yeah. Ugh. I love November. No, you don't. I Nobody totally, loves I November. I totally, totally love November. It's well, one of my favorite months. Why do you months. love November? Well, so it's, it's like the build up to my birthday, partly. And I, it's well, the dark- I like your birthday, but I don't like, I don't like. Well, it's getting darker and darker and it's so dramatic and like the world is coming to an end and then the solstice comes. And then it does. The snow falls no. and you're no. cold and depressed. No, we're not. Um, I think Vermonters have the highest percentage of seasonal depression no they don't they do christina we're gonna make vermonters happy now oh <laughs> okay with, single-handedly with a song called the wind is lonesome <laughs> by mary mcginnis <laughs> the wind is lonesome on a mountain top where the red tails fly And the clouds are low I started walking But I couldn't stop There was no place left to go There was no place left to go I know a woman She knows the rains She doesn't seem Need a lover Her rivers wander Through summer days Summer lasts when summer's over Summer lasts when summer's over I know a place where The waitress smiles a lot Leave her a tip she'll give you Everything she's got The driver's stare as if the road would never stop That road just keeps on going Where the waitress smiles a lot Leave her a tip, she'll give you Everything she's got The driver's stare as if the road Would never stop That road just keeps on going Somewhere in Danby Is a jar of lightning It's stashed away In a hollow tree The lightning strikes And the deer are frightened They chase the moon Through the marble valley They chase the moon Through the marble valley The wind is lonesome On a mountain top Where the red tail flies And the clouds are low I started walking But I couldn't stop 
There was no place left to go There was no place left to go There was no place left to go <sighs> Mary McGinnis of Burlington She has such a creamy voice mm-hmm. Creamy That was nice I like hearing her voice I think that I think we did that at my studio. I feel oh, really? so stupid saying I think. Well, yes. you have done a lot of music there, so it's probably not that yeah, not hard that to abnormal. Uh, not remember every single piece that have been that's been done there. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, personal growth Friday. What do you think? Oh, sure. Unless you, you know, you can you can always break in with something more important. More important than personal growth? Yeah. If it's just not working for you. I think it to will grow. work for me. Because I wanted to talk about um, human beings. Okay. What about them? That they need to take take back the world. You know, those of us who are still human, we need to assert ourselves. And I think there's a definite problem with non-humans on the planet. Well, I guess it depends how you define humans. Yeah, I mean, you could. It doesn't matter. You can think of it as a metaphor, or you can think of it as an actual truth. You know that there are pathological creatures living among us that are non-human or partially hybrid, hybrid human. Yeah. What do you think? What causes this? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it's anger. Lack of what? empathy is the yes. biggest problem on the planet. But what has made people this way? Well, what that's has made it so. The million there dollar are question people out there. If I, if I ran sobbing into the middle of, of a square and said some, some you know, threw my heart out there, how many people would actually... I think a lot of people are, are human. There's still a lot of humans. I think, I, think, um, I think there's actually more humans than the, uh, what do you call, the adulterated species. I don't know. There's so much anger, but why do why do the why are there some people who seem human in person, like yeah. you can really Those connect the with them one on one, and then and then you see, say online, them just having zero empathy for the human plight in general, and just saying, well, blah blah blah, it's their own fault. Yeah, blah blah. blah. You know, that's how, a psychopath. How can, that, how can that be? Because that's the strain of psychopathy, <clears throat> if there is such a word. That's where that's where it's it's insidious because you can't really tell. I mean, because they, well, they have they have very good learned behaviors, and yet they have no empathy. So I challenge every human being who may possibly be listening, and I, I challenge you also to challenge others in return. To every time you're about to be angry with someone or some situation, just reverse it. Just say, "That's me. That's me over there." How would I feel if I was like? running away from a horrible country or how would I feel if that was my daughter having this terrible thing happen to her or how would I feel if you know just it's, all these situations that you're really really upset about the greedy lazy welfare mamas or whatever it is you want to be yelling about right then just just say I'm going to I'm going to pretend I'm them for it's, one minute it's basically do unto others that's very simple it's the there golden are, rule is yeah. gone it's gone it's but gone I, I think in addition to that we sort of have to learn <clears throat> each of us has to learn what is abnormal and we need to get we need to get used to not accepting crappy behavior we need to not tolerate it and sort of be I think sometimes we're so shocked that someone could behave in a certain I way know. that we well that we're stunned out of um exactly but then, fighting back from then it's it. like, I know I am all I, the time. I think the hard the hard thing is to stand away from it and call it out. I mean that's what people have such a hard time doing and it happens because we get stuck and we get dependent on these disturbed individuals. Well and sometimes you're not prepared to call out things because you're you know, it's a situation you never would have even guessed. Like and so you just don't yeah. You well, are you are literally in shock. I, I spend yeah. a lot of my days looking around at the state of the world and I'm in shock and I, I haven't really been able to take stock of what to do about it yet because I'm just right saying And it's what? I, I know I think it's almost easier for some of us to contort our our own self into something sort of greatly diminished rather than to, you know, figure out how to 
uh, you know, disengage and live a free life, you know, a free life of love and harmony, which is a very bold, radical thing to do in today's world. I mean, if we were to say, let's end war, that's, that's supposed to be like a radical way to think, which is stupid. We've been brainwashed to think that we, you know, have radical. to have war. It's actually quite practical. <laughs> Yes, I'd say so. For everyone For whining humans. about how much money our government is yeah. spending and blah, 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 blah. And then to say that the crybaby liberals just want to stop the peace, man, all that. Like, actually, you want to save money? Well, it's not, it's not even, it's not even the, 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 li- the so-called liberals aren't even the peace party anymore. Because oh, they're, cor- they're, cor- no- they're, 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 they're beholden to the corporate powers so it's let's like just it's get not rid of the political parties and let's yeah. all just be cool okay Kay. gotcha i mean i'm i'm down with that man so what is this, this probably shouldn't be our, our pre-campaign show should it <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry my poor husband i feel bad that he has to run for office <laughs> with me as a wife because i'm like a not a super great campaign manager i try but it's I'm, a not, hard, it's I'm, a not, very I'm hard, not great at it because you know hard. what? Politics are really not my thing and I don't want them to be my thing. And and I have made my peace with that. I have other things that are my thing. But it's hard too because I want to be super supportive. And I do believe that he's an amazing person who's going to do an amazing job. Yeah. But I can't. I'm not, I'm not doing a great job of publicly... Uh, promoting how awesome he is. That's so okay. That's, You're not a professional. No, I'm not. What you call it? Nobody expects you to be a professional. Anything. What you call it? Yeah. You know they do though. That's the problem. I think they do expect me to be a professional. What you call it? So, like who? Who are they? Like anyone who's frustrated that I'm not doing a great job promoting. Like, like who? A really good. Candidate. Who are you talking about? Democratic Party? Who are you talking about? Yeah, sure. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The ba- <laughs> those who judge i should be doing a better job it's true but i also have to work and be a mom and have a farm and other things so you know yeah i'm frustrated that you know what the people who are often running for office are not real are not real people okay we have discovered well while running this campaign that all the things that we're supposed to be doing and getting to and uh, making time for Mm -hmm. are not possible when you're a working human being, uh, we see there's all these events that we're supposed to be attending and things. And yes. I'm like, um, those are during work hours when we have other, other responsibilities and other obligations. And then we look at most of the other politicians who are maybe retired or maybe independently wealthy. And I'm thinking there needs to be a way to switch the system around so that a working class person who actually is holding down a job and knows what it's like to be a working class person can be in office and make these changes does, for the people that that need these changes. How does David Zuckerberg do it? He's a farmer. Isn't it Zuckerman? Zuckerman. I always say Zuckerberg because I mix him up with his, his nemesis. Isn't that some? Isn't that like Mark some Zucker- jam company? That's Smuckers. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. If it's I Smuckers, love, it has I, to love, be good. I love getting words mixed up. <clears throat> oh, I I had a lot of words of today to talk about that were anyway. getting mixed up. I'm just going to throw these words out, and next maybe next week we'll get into them. The words are reek, R E E K, reek, W R E A K, or wreck, or wreck, W R E C K, or rot, W R O U G H D. Those so good we'll, words. we'll discuss those next week because nice. I think they're very interesting. They are. But Anyhow, whatever. My whole point was that they should make it so that politicians don't have to be wealthy people. Yeah. Because um, what, you know, so 90% of the rest of our country is being represented by people who don't know where well, they come from. Yeah. There's an interesting idea, actually, that when you when you vote, you're giving consent to be governed. And I think that's cool in our state races you it know is, but i, I, I want to be i want to give consent to someone who knows what i face every day that's what i want to give yes consent to. and I, I agree with you but i you know thinking on the national level like i don't want to give consent anymore to be governed by this government you know so that's that's an argument for not voting which i know a lot of people would argue for but it's like it's almost getting to the point where you have to take a stand philosophically yeah. like no i don't give my consent to this so we have to come up with something different possibly um. Yeah, and you're you're 
got your toe in the water of the political system there, my dear. (laughs) (laughs) That's something I would never have thought would be happening. Well, if you ever get fed up with it, just come play with me and Tiffany. (laughs) We're going to have some fun. We're going to put on some shows. And like she wants me to. Does Tiffany sing and stuff too? Well, she's, she plays drums. Okay. I hope she does a cover of I Think We're Alone Now. Tell her that I that's my request. Not that she okay. not that I deserve to, to give her a request since I've actually already just made fun of her name and everything else. <laughs> she doesn't take it personally. She's so hip. She's, I'm just saying I think she should do a cover of Tiffany, the original other Tiffany's. Well, we'll see I what she says about now. that. But, you know, I was so honored that she wants me to run. In a mall. Sorry. We'd like fake palm trees. I love the way that we can sort of both be talking about completely different things simultaneously. I love the way that you don't get mad at me when I interrupt you really, really <laughs> rudely over and over again every single show. Yeah. No, I kind of <laughs> I I kind of, enjoy it. It's kind of energetically, it's it's fun and surprising. It's Because like, you had children yeah. who are inherently rude people, like all children are, so you're just used to being around yes. people like me. Yes, life interrupt us. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's all that happened for about 20 years is that <laughs> everything I was trying to do was interrupted. And that has yeah, an effect. You're just that so tolerant. Sort of, it's wonderful. No, it's like a, there's a cumulative effect to that. I mean, part on the good side, you learn patience. But on the downside, you kind of develop this fragmented uh, Way of consciousness. Speaking. Yeah. But I think then, it, you know, when they all leave, then you you can put your life back together. I used to have an ex friend who who would actually put her finger up and purse her lips like really meanly every time that I interrupted, <laughs> like in a and you know I had said once offhand, oh, "I'm so sorry that I interrupted." I was just really excited about I, whatever. Yeah. And then she was like, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna like try to train you out of it or whatever." But then she was like kind of nasty about it forever. And I know that it's an annoying habit that I have. I know I'm bad about interrupting, but. You know what she is? She's like teacher's pet. Yeah, it's that's that, totally true. But I now, kind. I feel, Christina, you and I are true friends because even if you get mad at me inside, you're super nice about me being <laughs> an interrupting person because clearly I've tried yeah. to break myself of it for years and years and I I can't seem to do it. So. Well, the problem is that you're so entertaining that I don't oh. want to interrupt something that's that entertaining, even if it's, you know, taking me <laughs> off course. You know, life is, life is, life is dull. A lot of life is dull. This is my mark of my only true friends, the ones that can put up with me interrupting them and, and only get like pissy every once in a great while. Well, I think both of us love our friends who entertain us and keep us, (laughs) keep us smiling despite all of it. Yeah, it's, it's so I hope everybody had a good Halloween. I know you didn't because you didn't, you didn't like Halloween, but. Well, don't say that. Sorry. Well, I'm sure you had a good October 31st. First. <laughs> I'm just saying, I bet you didn't put on kitten ears and a tail and go prance around some bar in a leotard. I bet yeah. you didn't do that. No, I don't celebrate it. And I'm really glad I don't have to take kids trick or treating. But I did drive home from my gardening job like at six. It was dark. And I drove through South Royalton. And I really got some pleasure out of seeing the little children walking down the streets. But I still was glad that I wasn't one of those parents who was freezing to death in the rain having to take their kids around. We I, were, we I were, admit it. We were out there in the freezing rain. I paid my dues. You did. <laughs> you know, when you have three kids, you pay, you pay your dues. I was and, like the the really I was like the really irritating tour guide the whole time I was like come on come on come on come on because yeah, they would yeah, like linger up. and I was like get your candy I was like just get you get to the next house we gotta I want to be done yeah. with this I gotta used, be done yeah I used to make the dads do it oh, smart. that was my strategy yeah but there were still parties and stuff that I had to endure I had to socialize we oh, had the dads just talking so like John glad. and Matt just stopped and like talked it's, everywhere yeah and so I'd be like okay kids are trying to trick or treat right now and you guys are just socializing yeah but, I'm just glad that's done. But I did send Wilder a text message saying Happy Halloween. Aww. And that felt good. Did you say like, boo, love from mom? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I we'll go out on a song. This is a song uh, by my, br- my brother to my other brother. Nice. Yeah, this is very cool. It's called Dear Steve. Where's your song? Why did they write you a song? I don't know. So Steve and Marcus have written each other songs, but you don't get any song? No, Marek has written Steve in a, st- a song. Does Steve, Steve care? No, of course okay. not. All right, well, you I should have written you a song. <laughs> Sorry. You know, we just can't get to everything in life. So this if you true. if you miss this song on this show, please come to the podcast and you'll hear it there. And thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Vote. Okay, see you next week. Dear Steve. 
You might not believe it, but Kenneth is reading way above his age group. Now I know we don't get to talk much, so I thought I'd share this photo up of my boy winning at the Indoloo. Hey Steve, why don't you gloat when you succeed? Don't you have the balls to boast even when you lose? Cause I never miss a beat, no I can never retreat Even if it was my turn for the fat lady to sing the blues I can't decide if the light outside will bear the truth so help me I'm trying to write this letter right so man the sails and then me but Dear Steve, it used to be That you and I were friendly but Hey now, let me tell you The last year was a real let down I was passed over for promotion by a greyhound I moved real quick Real slick, and he had the time to booze it up with the boss on the playground. Tell me, should I get up and leave? Would that teach the bastards that can't keep a good man down? I can't decide if the light outside will bear the truth, so help me. I'm trying to write this letter right, so man, the sails and men me. Dear Steve, it used to be that you and I were friendly Yeah. Mm -hmm.